Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we got a lot to discuss, and I'm really pleased to have Mike Zeno on the podcast. <laughs> Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. The Zen master himself, Mike, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, some of you might know him. We'll just call him Six Sigma. Scott Todd <laughs> from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. And, uh, and Scott's got a cool announcement. I don't know. Are you, are you ready to announce it, Scott, about uh, the platform? Wait, you're, you're on mute. What the heck? Yeah, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to go. Yeah, we're gonna destroy land and farm and land. What is it? Land Just of the lands. Just forget lands. all of them. Forget all the uh, lands. And I'm gonna tell you why in this episode. All right, and then last but not least, Eric, I make it rain. Peterson <laughs> from Landopia.com. Eric, how are you? I'm doing very well, thanks. All right, well, let's just get into it, guys. Let's, let's talk about a, a pain point or something that we're seeing, uh, a common mistake, and it's pricing, right? So, you know, Scott, why don't, why don't you kind of like, kind of give everybody the, 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 the high end view of this, the yeah. big picture view of what, what the mistake is? Well, I think, I think the problem that, that we see a lot of people make is, that they're leading with the wrong price. You know, like what they want to do is they want to lead with, oh, the cash price. So what they first try to do is they struggle to figure out what they're going to sell the land for. And so they go and they're like, okay, well, I'm going to sell the land for, you know, $5,000 cash. That's what I want. $5,000 cash. That's what I want. And the thing is, is this, this business is not about what you want. Okay. Because if it is, you're never going to sell the property. It's about what the marketplace will bear. So I think that a better way of looking at this is to go back to the marketplace and, and just figure out, okay, well, what are other people selling the land for on terms? Is it, you know, $500 down and, you know, 200 a month for, um, for 36 months. So do the math real fast. What is that? Uh, 30, $7,700, right? So now I'm at $7,700 for the, for the uh, terms price. Now let's back into the cash price right? Like now give a cash discount. That's what the investor's toolkit teaches. That's what a lot of, a lot of people are missing is that it's not the cash price first. And then the terms it's figure out what the terms price is. What's that irresistible offer. And then figure out what you want to do to offer a discount. Is it a 20% discount? Is it a 25% discount? It's all in that case, it's all about what you want to offer but then it's a negotiation point, right? So the reason you put the cash price out there is not like, I'm gonna get this cash price, it's to tease the difference between the terms price and the, and the cash price. I mean, Mike, as far as like how you do your pricing, are you doing the, the Warren Buffett mar margin of safety of 300% and then just listing it? Yeah, I mean, um, we always looking for that golden 300% but we do go, um, and that's why we make our money on the buy side. But what I think Scott brought up was a really valid point. You know, we see it a lot at the boot camp. We do these, maybe the breakout groups and the teams come back and they want to present their ideas to selling a property. And he's like, oh, I want to get, I want to get a thousand dollars down. We're going to get a $500 dog fee and they'll pay the initial payment of $500. It's like, there's all these things that sound great, but then there's the market and what's really going to work. So uh, the irresistible pricing, I mean, that's how we get, yes, we do make cash flips two, 300% regularly but the uh, terms deals when you get up approaching uh, we just sold one on ebay i bought it for 150 i sold for 2000 on terms that's because you make your money on the buy side and you know you make an irresistible price i mean it's only 55 dollars a month but it doesn't matter i only paid 150 dollars for it so it doesn't matter yeah i mean your, your money's out probably on the down or within three months of the down and yeah you, it's at 100 dollars right now pay.io to manage it it's, it's a <laughs> it's a set it and forget it automated financial CRM and it, yes. it works great. So <laughs> Eric Peterson, when you come up with your pricing, how, how are you listing it? Are you, are you doing exactly what Scott says to do and you're, you're advertising the, the terms price and then you'll discuss cash or, or how, how are you doing it? Well, 
I kind of take a different approach. Um, and honestly, I, I've had some, some pretty good feedback on, on how I present my pricing, but on my website, I actually offer a cash price um, and typically three different options for seller financing. Um, and that's just with different term lengths and, and higher payments or lower payments, depending on the term. Um, but uh, my customers generally will give me feedback along the lines of, you know, I liked, you know, the, the options you had for pricing. Um, sometimes we'll discuss other options if they might want to put more money down or different things like that. But um, that's, that's how I've approached it and it's worked well so far. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, this idea of presenting the terms price up front and, and uh, offering a cash discount, I, I, I do take that strategy, um, but I just, I present more options once someone gets to my website. But, you know, if they're finding my ad on Craigslist, they're not gonna see all those options until they've actually, you know, looked at all the details on my website. Yeah, I mean, I have mixed emotions about the options because there's that study done about the jellies or the jams and, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's 40 jams in one store and there's seven in the other, right? Yeah. Well, the jams that had 40 got, you know, three times the traffic as the store that had only seven jams. But for mm -hmm. sales, the store that had seven jams did three times the sales as the store that had 40 because it was simpler for the customer to make that decision, right? So I think to make it as simple as possible, you give them that one terms price and then you talk to them about different options. But as far as advertising it, I think you can confuse your buyer, but your <laughs> results speak for themselves. So you yeah. could just drop the mic on me, Eric, and be like, well, take that study and <laughs> stuff. Well, it. I really think it, it comes down to how it's presented too. Um, it can be confusing if it's not presented in a clear, um, you know, way on, on your website or, or however that's presented. So, I mean, it's just like, um, you know, any of the software as a service websites that, that present their pricing in a tiered kind of schedule, as long as it's presented in a way that's clear to the consumer and, you know, they can understand the benefit of one over the other, um, and certainly, I mean, you cannot give 40 different options, you know, then you're going to have a problem. But if you keep it reasonable, you know, say between two and four, um, in my experience, um, it works okay. But Scott Todd, how are you advertising? Uh, we just do the, uh, we do the terms price first, low down, low monthly, and then back into a cash price. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, the theme of this is that we're all making our pricing irresistible, right? And we don't care what we want. Um, I remember having a coaching client uh, saying, hey, you know, I'm tied on cash. I need to sell this for cash. I'm like, well, it doesn't matter what you want. It's what the market wants. And as soon as he changed the pricing to terms, it flew off the shelf. Otherwise, he was sitting there for 30 days waiting on, on this cash price that, that never came. Um, I had the same experience on a deal in Texas. I mean, I, I bought, you know, the whole subdivision and it's got power and it's got water and there's roads and I got this sweetheart deal and I'm, I'm going to, and I'm going to sell this, these lots for $10,000 because you couldn't even develop this for that, for that low anymore. Right? Like people were paying these for twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 back in the day. So I, I advertised at $10,000 crickets, right? I lowered it to eight crickets. Lowered, lowered, lowered. Next thing you know, my sweet spot was like two grand to sell it. But that's what the market deemed worthy of those lots. Mike, how, how about you? What, how, how are you offering your, your terms? Well, when we, when we do the wholesaling, a lot of times we'll do the same. It's the same idea, really, is we show people what the returns can be. So we'll have some sales examples that we've had, and you're going to make four five hundred percent. So then we show them the then we back into the cash price and the cash price. So it shows them how they could buy it 
and they can make that same return. So I guess in essence, we do the same thing wholesale and we give them, you know, that example of a term sale and how much money they can make on that. And then we back in and they see what a value of the cash deal is as a, as a wholesale. Now, when it comes to the same thing on eBay, when we like this property I just sold, we've done this a number of times where, okay, he bought it for uh, 2000 on terms. I may back down and say, Hey, if you want to, just so you know, I'll offer you a quick cash price. If you would like to, uh, if you'd like to make this real simple and I'll give him a discount and he may or may not jump on it. So we do the same thing. Uh, eBay, uh, when we sell on terms, we'll go back in as soon as the deal is closed and right at that point, give them an opportunity to uh, save a bunch of money and pay it off cash, which will still be a large return for us. Won't be the same as uh, three years of uh, $50 a month, but it's still, you know, we do that uh, same philosophy. Nice. Nice. Um, Moving on, are, are we good with pricing? Is there anything else we want to discuss, Scott? I think so. We're good. Um, we have three spots left for June flight school. Three yeah. spots left for June flight school. Um, and Scott, what you've got a class tonight? Yeah. Tell tell us what. Uh, give us a little insight into flight school, like like last week's, you know. Yeah. Call and then this week's call. Yeah, you know. Um, we're in the in the May class, which is on, which just started at the beginning of May. So we are we're into the last week. We were into the um, or two weeks ago. We we're actually into the due diligence piece. And what's really cool to me about the due diligence piece is that um, basically we were able to go out and um, do you know perform actual due diligence on a property. So it's it's really about. Um, you know, here's a property, go do the due diligence on it. And we break them up into rooms. Now, remember, this is a digital class, right? Like this is a remote class and we're able to take them and like break them into work groups. Okay. Breakout rooms. And they go through the power and magic of technology. They just go somewhere. I don't even know where they go, but they just <laughs> go somewhere. And there, there's like three or four people in a group and they're able to talk. They're able to share their screen. They're able to interact. They're able to work together and solve this problem of due diligence and go through it. And then at a certain point in time, I bring them all back. I close down those rooms through the power and magic of technology. They reappear. It's amazing to me. And then they show back up and then we go through the, we go through it and I show them a, a deal that I actually bought. And I talked to them about, okay, this is, this is a deal that I bought. Here's what I was thinking. Here's what I was seeing. Here's what was holding me back. And, it really allows them to go back and to use tools um, in the marketplace and actually perform due diligence in real time. And that's something I think mis is missing from uh, the, you know, whether it's the investor's toolkit or really any info product is the fact that, yeah, you're going to go do it, but then you've got to figure out, okay, well now it's time to do due diligence. So how am I going to do it? And you're not able to have someone kind of looking over your shoulder to show you like, Hey, this is how I did it. Tonight's class is actually on, uh, marketing. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take them and they're going to kind of, we're going to talk about marketing as a whole. And then again, through the magic of technology, they're going to disappear and they're going to actually look at a property that I have available for sale. They're going to basically write an ad and figure out how to market this property headline and all. And then they're going to work together with their group and then they're going to come back and they're going to present their findings and uh, it's a little bit of a competition. So basically, it's, it's really cool from that perspective that they're able to go back and, uh, you know, execute and get and learn from others, but actually doing the work as opposed to just reading or hearing someone talk about it. Yeah, I mean, it takes, you know, your the embracing the suck philosophy. And now we're doing it as a group, right? And we're making you do it as opposed to you know, like I know, like when I get some of these digital courses and they're so big, right? Like I look at it, I'm like, oh, I don't want to take this on. And then I, you know, maybe I'll read a little bit and I'll start doing it. And my, like my, my, my tolerance for frustration now is like, like a two year old's. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, why is this so hard for me? Like everything should be so easy. And it's hard that I'm like, oh, and it feels so much better if I, I can do like Zeno was having a hard time with it, right? They're like, okay, now I can talk to Zeno about, you know, how does he conduct his due diligence? Let's create this checklist together. It's like, you know, it's like boot camp together, right? Like you got like these army buddies in a way. Like we're all going through this together. We're all doing it in real time together. 
And, uh, you know, I think it's great. Eric Peterson, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, um, I didn't go through flight school, but, you know, hearing Scott talk about that, I, a couple things come to mind that are beneficial in a number of ways. I mean, first of all, just um, putting people in these groups and making them work together gives them connections to, to be able to go back to in the future as they're, you know, working their own businesses and say, hey, you know, I, I got a question about this. Well, who could I reach out to? Well, you know, so-and-so that was in my group, you know, I, I know him so or her and I can, you know, reach out to them pretty easily. And, and you've already got that connection and background to, to be able to kind of bounce ideas off them. So I think that's actually a, a huge benefit compared to, um, you know, just downloading the investor tool kit and, uh, you know, trying to go through it by yourself. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Mike Zano, it's like the difference between uh, working out on your own and, and going to like a, a group exercise class. Yeah. You know what exactly. And I think what Todd, Scott Todd is uh, talking about here is what I really bring up to people. This is an action orientated uh, experience. This is closing that execution gap. This is like you're, and I tell people, the people that are out there right now that are going to take these three last spots, they're the people that really know that they want to move the needle. I, you don't have to, this is not something that we sell people on. This is something that people, they know they need. They know that they're ready to take this step. And I tell them, unless they're 110% ready to go, don't do it. Because once Scott gets his hands on you, it's all action all you're moving forward and there's no more pontification you're not thinking about it it's like deals that's happening right from the day one you're doing your mailings so it is action orientated and you have to be ready for that and the people that jump in there are ready for it and that's why they have results i mean we, we talk about it. even if you're going to do the toolkit and you're going to get maybe one to three uh, deals over the next six months or whatnot you're going to 10x that with the flight school because you're going to take all that you have and make it better and if you're going to do no deals, well, then you're going to do some deals. So that's even better, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Tate Litchfield's on the call. Hey, Tate, guys. how are you? Doing well. Sorry about that scheduling uh, mistake on my end, but happy to be here. No worries. No worries. So, we, we, you know, all, all you missed was like, we were talking a little bit about pricing. Um, you know, Scott saw some mistakes in the marketplace. Now we're talking about the, you know, three spots for flight school. Ooh. But... Our next topic is one that's right up your alley. Oh, bring it on. <laughs> let's do if it. You, okay, let's say you're starting today, right? Okay. And you're going through and you're, you're in flight school, you've got the toolkit, and you're, you know, you're sending out your first batch of offers, right? And you're going to create your first process, your first system, your first thing you want to delegate to a VA. What would it be? Ooh. That is a really good question. For me, I'm going with some of the basic due diligence stuff. That's what I'm looking to outsource because, I mean, I hate being on hold. And anybody who's ever called the county knows that, you know, being calling the county involves being on hold for long periods of time. And so I'd rather have somebody do that for me, verify the information for me. So for me, due diligence, that's what's getting outsourced to someone I trust, of course. Eric Peterson, what would you outsource first? I think a uh, big one it would be list scrubbing. Just, uh, you know, once you know how that process works, finding someone else to do it because it's not fun. Yeah, if Bart Simpson says I macros one more time, <laughs> Scott Todd's head will explode. List scrubbing. I like that. I like that. Mike Zana, what about you? Well, if you're following what we teach you and or Scott's 20 mailings a day, you're, you're going to start exploding with accepted office. So I'm right on there with Tate. You need to have a way to handle that. It's your life is going to change. If you start these mailings and you continue with the consistency, your life is going to change. There's going to be deals. Like we say, more deals than you can handle. And you can't be on the phone all day calling the County. As Tate said, you may not even want to dealing with the people calling in. You may want to find someone to kind of step in the middle and accept, you know, these uh, accepted offers, take a look at them, do the due diligence, find out if they're worth pursuing. I mean, you can right away, you know, we'll teach you right away, you know, in our system, how to know if the deals are going or not from the beginning. So there's a couple quick things a VA can do for you and then take it from there and even further down the road with due diligence if you're going to pursue it. So yeah, that is definitely something that you would want to get a handle on sooner than later. I love it. Scott Todd, when you first started, what was the first thing you delegated? The very first thing was uh, Frankenstein the list, you know, scrubbing the <laughs> list and all that stuff. Like I did that for about three weeks. And like, I think 
I think people are uh, amazed to find out that literally for three weeks, I sat behind a computer for three hours a day, cutting and pasting, cutting and pasting, cutting and pasting, maybe not three, maybe two hours a day doing that to build my list so that I could mail. But that's what I did is I did that for three weeks in a row. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm done with this. If I do it one more time, I'm quitting. And uh, went out and got a VA to go do it. And I never looked back. Yeah. And I, I love the, the litmus test of, I have to do this one more time. I'm quitting as far as like, okay, now I have to, you know, I have to, I have to delegate this. And so it starts, I think with the list scrub, right? Then it goes to due diligence. Then it goes to what? Posting ads. Writing the ads, man. Like writing the old, writing the ads. Right? You actually outsource oh. writing the ads. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Oh, Eric Peterson's saying yes. You, you outsource yeah. writing the ads. Yeah, I do. I, that's another area that I, it just, I spend way too much time if I do it myself. So yeah, I outsource that and it works really well. I just go to Scott's website, copy, paste, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I got a little ninja tactic I can't, I can't share, but yeah, it's copy, copy, paste. What the heck? <laughs> Tate? Well, I was going to say, I outsource my ads to Scott Todd, but, uh, <laughs> he doesn't know that until right now. Sorry, Scott. But, yeah, yeah you just copied yeah. my stuff, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you think my ads are so good? Right, yeah. No. Yeah, good, I, yeah. good artist good copy, Mark. great artist steal. Mark, I got a question for you. And the group on here, because this is something that I've noticed. When people are writing ads, I feel like a lot of people spend way too much time writing their ads. I think they're going for that A-plus quality of work. And in reality... People got to start thinking that Steve get degrees when it comes to Craigslist. You know, it's all about just getting ads out there. They don't have to be perfect, right? If you get that B average going on, that's going to get clicks and clicks are going to make leads and leads are going to create sales. So I, I'm surprised Mike Zano's shaking head. He, he no, agrees, like, Laura, Laura Zano's ads are like amazing. You don't even do your own ads, Mike. You never no, even do your own said. ads in the beginning. I'm, we have, I'm loving what he said because it's the same thing about the mailings. People want a perfect mailing. Oh, I got to have the most perfect mailing. But that's not what's going to get you deals. Consistent, okay mailings, you're going to get a ton of deals. You don't have to have like the best mailing. You know, it's okay if you screw up. Who cares? Recover and it's make a deal. the average, right? <laughs> hey, how, how, do you get over the, how do you get over the mental hurdle of perfectionism? Um, Eric Peterson, you're, you kind of have like that perfectionist type of <laughs> – you know, vibe about you. Like, you know, his hair is always looking really good. He's a fit guy. The guitars. He's got the guitars going. Guitars. He's doing really well. Eric, how, what's your, what's your, your mental, how do you get over that mental hurdle of like, is this is good enough to ship? That's tough for me. Um, you know, I, See, I, pegged I him. yeah, I mean, I really <laughs> like things to be, Spot on, you know, as a graphic designer, the, the uh, aesthetics of things matter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I tend to probably take a little more of a, um, I guess, thorough look at everything uh, more so than, than probably most. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a battle uh, for me. Um, because I, I do want things to be right and, and perfect and, and look the way I want them to look. So I, you know, um, I don't know if I have a good solution for it. It's, it's something that, that I'm always kind of fighting against. So you don't give yourself a deadline and say, if it's not done by this time, I'm, I'm shipping. I do sometimes it depends on the task, but yeah, I mean, sometimes I've got to do things like that. Other times I've just got to, let it go and, and have someone else take care of it. Um, so it depends on the situation. And Mike Zano, in your day job of saving lives, right? <laughs> there's no really a lot of room for error, right? So how do you get over the fact in business, you can't be perfect? Like what's your mindset? Well, even on the fight department, I always say that it's all about recovery because nothing's ever the same. There's never one fire one medical one there's always something different there's always a new variable so it's really the art of recovery how quick can you recover how quick can you you know get back to what you have to do when you're kind of you know life or the situation takes you off so i take the same approach to the business i think a lot of the stuff that we're talking about it builds character and in the beginning i think it's important this whole like listen to scott talk story about cutting and pasting for three weeks i mean that builds character and determination that you don't do it anymore but i think the whole business 
is like that. There's a grocery store in town that has a chain they may, and they have a number of stores and the person that takes over the future owner, the grandson or has to start pushing carriages and he has to start bagging and he has to do every single job in that, in that supermarket before he becomes the general manager because you have an appreciation and understanding of all aspects of it. I think our business is the same way. So yeah, there's not going to be perfection, but, um, and also let go of the fact that, you know, nobody can do it better than us. Because we get that, right? Oh, I'm, I'm the best ad writer. I'm the best uh, copy and paster. But, you know, there's people out there that can if we let them do better and we have to just find them. So, I don't know. It's all about recovery. There's nothing, there's unfortunately nothing perfect in this world. Uh, but we just keep recovering and uh, getting back on the path. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's, it's such a good answer. In fact, I just wrote a, uh, an email about that. Uh, I was talking, by the way, speaking of emails, Danielle's like, Mark, you write too many emails. <laughs> and so I, I actually have to do like a survey, like, how, how, how many emails should I be writing? But I'm kind of like, look. I love them. Keep you, you like them? I love stories. <laughs> Eric, too many emails? No, I don't think so. Oh, his, his voice just went up. That's a big <laughs> I yes. I sure about that. <laughs> Tate, too many uh, emails? I don't know. Nah, I mean. <laughs> that, yeah, I, that hat looks I, good I, on you, Mark. <laughs> I enjoy the ones I read, Mark. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Wow. Uh, wow, Mark. Wow. There's no, your boy, man. There's your boy. <laughs> no, and there's not too many. It goes back to the philosophy, right? You're either going to be top of mind or you're, you're out of business, right? So Yeah, I, I like the Grant Cardone approach. I'm, I'm going to ignore Danielle's advice and just keep emailing. Danielle's pretty smart, though. She, and, that's, and that's the problem is she is pretty smart. So maybe I shouldn't. You know what? And that kind of gets you to the point where like, um, I'm certain of being uncertain, right? So you got to try things. Scott, Todd, what's your, what's your mindset as far as shipping and, and uh, not being perfectionist? Uh, I would rather get something out there and then tweak it uh, from feedback, right? Like d to me, done beats perfect every time. Okay. And so I would rather just, you know, put something out there and, you know, if, if it's not perfect, uh, I don't think we live in a perfect society. I don't think that um, we live in a time where, where everything has to be perfect. We, we accept a lot of things, right? And, um, you know, as long as it's solving a problem for me, I think it's, it's all good. I love it. Tate, what about you? Same thing. I mean, you know, I can, you can always fix it. So recovery is the key here. Don't worry about offering too much. You can always renegotiate, right? If you pick a bad area, guess what? It's a learning mistake, but it's not a waste of time because now you know not to mail there, right? So every mistake that you make is actually just something that you're going to build on and, and learn from. So I think that you also have to just accept the fact that if I have to make every one of the things that I do perfect, I'm not going to be efficient and I'm not going to reach my goals ever. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. One of my favorite boot camp stories is Mimi Schmidt. It's like I, I sent out offers with no offer. And she still got deals. I mean, it was, it was, it was insane. Um, so, you know, there you go. All right, gentlemen, we're at that point in the podcast now where I get to put all of you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives, and also hopefully subscribe, rate, and review the podcast because they love the Land Geek Roundtable podcast. Mike Zana, let's start with you. What do you got? Oh, you're on mute, Mike. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, I'm back, right? You're back. So I'm going to just give a quick two-second parable and relate it to the land business. So maybe you've heard this before, but these two monks are walking and they come to a river bank and there's a, a woman standing there and she's having a hard time getting across. So one of the monks, the older monk, takes the woman, puts her on, her back, on his back, and walks her across the river. Now, these monks had taken a uh, part of their vows was no contact with women. So he puts the woman down the other side, and they're walking along. And the younger monk, who's, you know, the older monk carried the woman across. The younger monk finally can't take it. After about half an hour, he says, I can't take it. We have vows that you can't get near women. And you picked that woman up and brought her across the river. And the older monk looks at him and says, well, I put her down a half hour ago. You're still carrying her. <laughs> and I think that relates to the land business that if you have a good deal or if you have a bad deal, don't let, you know, don't get over, you know, 
crazy over the great deal and don't get over depressed about the bad deal. Just continue forward with the mailing, continue forward with the marketing. Don't hold on to these things that are going to like stagnate you or, you know, you're going to end up having the, uh, you know, the paralysis by over analysis because you're stuck thinking about uh, this one deal that either went great or went bad. It doesn't matter. This is a business where the deals are going to continue to come. None of us have made our business on one deal or lost our business on one deal. It doesn't matter. You just got to continue with the, with the process of mailing and marketing. So it's a, that's a great tip. Great tip. Eric Peterson, what's your tip of the week? All right, I've got an iPhone app today. Uh, JotNote Pro is um, basically a little scanning app for your phone. You can take a photo of a of a receipt or a document, what have you. Um, it um, you know converts it into a PDF. You can email it to yourself or whatever you need to do with it. Um, it is four ninety nine, but uh, I've been using it for a long time. It works well for me. I mean, Scott is, Todd and I use TurboScan. Okay. So. That's what I use. Can you make an argument why it's better? I don't know. I've never used TurboScan, so I can't. <laughs> I love TurboScan. But I haven't seen this other one. I'll look at it. All right. Well, good look. Good. I mean, should I say good tip? Average tip. Eric <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair tip. Next week, you'll up your game a bit. Next Great week, I got to do tip. two. Next week, you got it too, too. Exactly. We didn't say these roundtables were going to be easy for the, uh, <laughs> for the panel. Tate hey, Litchfield, what's your tip of the week? Oh, man. I've been struggling this week. But I started thinking about, like, what my top websites that I use. And I think this is something that we haven't talked about. So my tip of the week is going to be Wistia. And, yeah, I know you're shaking your head. You like it. What it is, is it's basically a website where you can upload videos to, and it's a secure network unlike YouTube, so you can see who's going to watch the videos, and I use it a lot for like VAs and stuff if I'm assigning them a task and I want to make a video example of how I want them to do it. I can record my screen using Zoom and then upload it to Wistia, and boom, they can watch it. It also uh, will show me if they viewed it or something like that. So I know if they, they actually watched the video or something. So I really like that. Uh, there's a lot of other platforms out there for this, but I think it's something that uh, is necessary. Some sort of video upload website. Yeah, and, and Wissy has a, a cool iPhone app too. They, do. I, they probably don't have an Android one, but I know they have iPhone for sure. Wow, I got away with that one. <laughs> uh, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark, uh, there's two things that drive me crazy. Number one, I macros. <laughs> Especially when people are like not doing their mailings because they're trying to figure out I macros. Okay, so my tip of the week is to stay away from I macros. No, my, the other thing that drives me crazy is when people spend too much time worrying about like, what should my logo look like? You know, all this logo stuff. Look, logos don't sell land. Okay, logos are like to make you feel good and make you feel proud, but a logo, it drives me insane when people go and they're like, hey, what do you think of this logo? Why don't we go get land first? Why don't we go get a business first? And then we'll figure out the logo piece second. But if you're hung up on that, I wanna make it very simple. Check out logopony.com, logopony.com. All right, I'm gonna check it out. Okay, so you've heard of like 99 designs and all this other stuff. Look, you can go, you can go get a logo Okay, for, for as little as like $19, maybe $49. And, um, you know, you go and they'll create it for you. Professional designers, you own the copyright. It's, it's up to you. Unlimited edits. Now, before you say, well, Scott, why don't I go to Fiverr? See, Eric, that's how you do it. You had them off. <laughs> Scott, why don't I just go to Fiverr and get someone on Fiverr? Because at Fiverr, you got to find somebody. And that's just wasting time that you could be mailing. So what are you going to do? You're going to go to Logo Pony or some other logo site, pay $19 and have someone design you a logo. And you don't even have to worry about finding somebody. Uh, you know what? I'm, I have no problem with that. I mean, I, 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 as long as here, – here's the corollary. Or here, here's the thing. As long as you've done your first deal, then I, I would say you have permission to go get a logo. If you haven't done your first deal – that should be your focus. Yeah, it's, uh, it's insane because no, no one has ever looked at my logo 
and said, oh man, it's a nice logo. I'm going to buy a piece of land from that guy. That's not it. It's not about the brand. It's, it really, this business is not necessarily about building a brand. It's about the, the basic, which is sell land. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know a guy who makes 400 grand a year. He's been doing this forever. He doesn't know HTML. His ads look disgustingly ugly. It's all text. He has like two pictures, but he's the best pricing and he gets land cheap. So he just hustles and people like buying land from him. All cash. It's crazy. He's been doing it forever. Tate Litchfield. You want another tip? Good podcast. Fantastic podcast. (laughs) I love these things. They're so fun. If anybody's not listening to them, I mean, they really don't know what they're missing, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, my tip of the week, by the way, is a good one because it's, it's really, it's really for the people that, um, are traveling, um, or they they know they're going to travel. They want that virtual mailbox, but they don't want to pay an arm and a leg for it. So if you go to Phoenix digital mailbox.com, it is the uh, Scott, give me a second. It, it is, <laughs> it is my ship, right? And if you tell Catherine, the owner, that the land geek referred you, she's going to, you know, do something. I'm not sure exactly what, but she said, Mark, you can, you can tell people to come here. I use the app. Tate, is the app amazing? It's fantastic. It's just an app. It's, it's a monthly fee. They don't nickel and dime you. Unlimited scans. The only thing you'd pay for is the monthly fee and if you forward mail or if you deposit checks. That's it. It's super easy. Scott, what's wrong? Why don't you like the... How, how is this any different than your tip of the week last week? We've already talked about this too. <laughs> <laughs> I did this tip of the week like in podcast number two. Because <laughs> I, I'll tell you why. Because I, it's a website now that she just updated and said, Mark, you can tell people to go here. So you sign up before. My, I didn't have the right site. I, I think that was fine. your tip last week though. I, Phoenix Digital Mailbox <laughs> was not my tip, was it? Yeah. No, I think that was on a. On a we certainly on a talked about it recently. Yeah, we've talked about this a bunch. Uh, I'm gonna have to go to the record, Mark. I I don't know. I you better start working on another. I think, t- another tip. I think it was in a mastermind call. Came, no, no, my, I, I think, think it, it, I think it was the mastermind. No, group. no, no, no. I remember it. It was on a round table. Uh, here I it is. Here it is. I got, it. Mailbox. I got sure? it right here. I got it right here. Let's see. Mark's tip of the week last week up oh, was was landing lion aha oh yeah okay okay oh. okay okay all right see the record the record setting you free man thank you. you uh yeah i, I did i did put it in the facebook group okay okay i think yeah. it was somewhere else though too well a- a- Ashok wanted to know and i i responded to him phoenix digital mailbox.com it's all good it's all good mark it's okay we Boy. have to harass you I'm, I'm just getting back i'm getting you back for uh for eric you know <laughs> I mean, come on, Jot Not Pro, really? <laughs> I'm not saying I agree. I disagree with you. I'm just saying, you know, like, you know. All um, right, fine. I'm I, done. I, I, I'm not giving any tips anymore. <laughs> Eric, we kid because we love. All right, what, what, are you, what are you reading these days? A book is always easy. I gave my tip. I'm done for the <laughs> <laughs> I promise we won't mock what you're reading. Next week, if you're reading like a comic book, like it won't be mocked. He's reading how not to get paper cuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've been messing tip. around with Airtable though, and I've been loving it. Uh, I have yeah, to tell Eric, you, Eric's Eric's like an Airtable guru, man. He's like a ninja over there. It's it's Airtable is is changing lives, and that was my tip. So it, I think was, I should get yeah. some Airtable love. By the way, hey, uh, in the it's, Last week, tip of the week, check out Airtable for Scott. That's what it says. Yeah. And then Danielle wrote, oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So uh, I do want to remind all the listeners, we're having a good time here, but uh, please subscribe. Please rate. Please review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income blueprint. Also, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Just scroll down, book a call with Mike or David and get one of the three spots left for the June class and actually soak in the Obi-Wan knowledge of Scott. 
Six Sigma Todd. Do you like that, Mike Zeno? I love it. And I think it's important to note we're having fun because land actually is fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really if you're not having fun, business. it's, yeah, exactly. Like, you, you can still make money and have fun. I think that's the, the ideal combination. And help people, which is even the most important. Absolutely. I, by the way, I had a bad dream the other night. I was at the Apple store because my kids cracked their iPhones. And then I, I, that night I went to bed and I, and I literally had a nightmare that I was hired by Apple and I was going to the job and I didn't know how to navigate like dealing with the company politics because I haven't worked for anybody in 16 years. And I was like stressing out. I'm like, oh my gosh, what, what do I do here with this report? And I had a boss and it was like, I woke up and I'm like, oh. It's so nice. I don't have to go to Apple. <laughs> it was great. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody. Um, thanks, guys, for being on the panel. We'll see everybody next uh, week for the Land Geek Roundtable. And uh, should, we try, should we try to do it? Why As a not, group? Mark? Let's try Let's it. Let's go. Right. I will do it on Scott's count. I'll watch his hand. One, two, three. Let freedom ring. ring. Oh, Mike. What? That was good. I pointed at everything. <laughs> I thought it was good. I liked it. Fair. It was fair. <laughs> it, was, it was a jot not pro type yes. of effort. <laughs> it wasn't a turbo, turbo scan. Yeah, it was not a turbo scan. It's, it, by the way, like we've no, I, I don't even know why we're hazing him. It's not like, I'm sure jot not pro is great. <laughs> it's just so we, we don't have use to, it. We have to. Somebody's got to be, get the short end of the stick. Yeah, yeah. It's like every round table we have to make fun of someone's coming to your next date. I know it. I, I'm a long <laughs> overdue. Yeah. You're gonna go uh, back to the big poppy. Yeah. <laughs> big. Poppy. All right, time to end it. Let's end it. All right, thanks, guys. All right, we'll stop recording. Here we go. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>